Friends. Friends was making a no, funny don't noise. Do that, <laughs> Pause. Oh, today is hard. Friends, welcome back to one of my favorite series. This is empties. I love watching empties. I love filming empties because I think that you get really robust reviews from these kind of videos. I want to know what are people actually finishing? What do they love enough to finish? And these are those products for me. Category number one, makeup. The Giorgio Armani My Armani To Go Essence In Foundation Cushion. I have two of these in my empties. If you have been watching my videos for a while, you'll remember this foundation. I have been using it for years. It has been a holy grail for years and I will be very upset when Armani discontinues this product because they have the tendency, the Armani has a tendency to discontinue complexion products. But for now, it's been an absolute favorite. This foundation is so brightening and it brings so much luminosity to the face. It has a little bit more of a satin finish, but I apply it over quite luminous skincare, so it takes on quite a luminous glow. I also find that the longevity is fabulous. Even if it wears away, you know, in the area where I wear my glasses throughout the day, I can just quickly go in and patch it up with a finger. It wears very elegantly throughout the day. Another Armani product, this is the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer in 5.5. So the Armani team actually sent me um, this product and I went on to repurchase the shade 4 and it has become a holy grail concealer for me. It is again very luminous, it's very brightening. It's a great one if you just want to like paint on a little bit with your, onto your face and just blend with fingers. Um, or you can pair it with a more glam look to achieve more coverage. So I find it to be very versatile and I like the way that it sits on dry skin. It doesn't crack or get cakey or feel really makeup-y on the skin. It feels really fresh. Another complexion product, the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand. So the Beauty Light Wand is, I think, an exceptional highlighter. In my mind, when I think amazing glossy cheekbones, immediately I think the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. It's got a little bit of a peachy, pinky glow, and I love this uh, on the tops of the cheekbones and blend it into the surrounding blush so that I get that really kind of seamless kind of saturated cheekbone. I will say this packaging, I have a real love-hate relationship with it. I find it to be really messy and a little bit unhygienic. It does apply um, products beautifully, but when I went to wash it, it sort of just fell apart, the sponge. It didn't wash very well. But the product inside, Glow Recipe Watermelon Lip Pop, one of my favorite lip balms. I featured one of these in my uh, lip balm encyclopedia. If you wanna go watch that, I'll link it in a card. This is definitely a lip balm that I would repurchase. It has a wonderful watermelon flavor that's very invigorating. And also it gives the lips a little bit of a pinkish hue. It's very subtle. It's not like a cheap pinkish hue. It's just um, just a little glow, a little lip glow in the center of the lips. And I love to pair this just over a lip liner for an everyday nude lip. This is the Marc Jacobs Fine Liner Ultra Skinny Gel Liner in black. And I am completely out of this one. I believe Marc Jacobs is, is no longer available um, as a brand but this eyeliner was one of my favorites um, from the line. And I'm happy to report that I found another product that is almost identical. It's the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter mechanical liner. Almost identical, both really lovely uh, long wearing eyeliners that have a really fine tip that allows you to get underneath the lashes and really color in between the lashes. Lots of precision, very long wearing, yeah. Try the hourglass one. On to mascara. I mean, we've heard me rave at nauseam about the Byredo Space Black. One of you guys mentioned to me on Instagram, you DM me saying that your, your product was quite dry. And that actually, um, I think, brings up an interesting point. This is quite a dry formula. If you like wet mascara formulas, this is an easy skip because it's definitely quite dry. And I find that this brush really grips every lash. 
and I get a lot of separation, I get a good amount of volume, I get length. I don't get clumpy bits at the end of my lashes, it's just really fanned and feathery and beautiful ridiculous price point but i have repurchased it i have repurchased it and i was so intrigued in fact by the byredo mascaras that i thought why don't i try the mixed emotions volume mascara first of all that i didn't realize the sales associate gave me this burgundy purple color but to be honest i quite enjoyed it while a while it lasted this formula not my fave not my fave at all. It was quite um, clumpy and I found that I had quite a bit of flake, flaking and transfer around the eye. So I will not be repurchasing that by Raider mascara. One more mascara, the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara. This is absolutely a favorite. Um, up there with the Byredo mascara, it has a really large um, natural bristle wand, which gives you very fanned, fluttery lashes. It doesn't overload the lashes at all. Um, that is one that I would also repurchase. I have two eyebrow pencils that I finished. The first is the Huda Beauty Bomb Brows in Medium Brown. In terms of formula, this is a bold claim. In terms of formula, I think this is my favorite brow pencil that I have ever come across. It has a really fine tip. It allows you to get really fine strokes. It doesn't get sort of waxy on the skin or doesn't build up, the product doesn't build up on the skin. I don't have to apply a lot of pressure to the skin. I don't have to like scratch at the skin to get the pigment going. Like truly, the formula is so on point for me. Unfortunately, the shades just run a little bit warm. Something about my skin tone pulls brow colors warm and I need a really ashy brow. So it is a little bit upsetting because I love that formula, but I don't think I'll be repurchasing that one because the shade just looks a little bit, a little bit too warm on me. I've got another eyebrow pencil that I used and loved, the Nabla Brow Divine. Uh, in the shade Neptune. So this is another fine tip, not quite as fine as the Huda Beauty. Um, and this one actually does have a slightly cooler shade Neptune. I've got a tiny bit left to show you. Make a 2023 favorite. What's that noise? Why don't you upload that? What? That's, I don't know, the pencil's making a funny noise. Hearing voices. <laughs> This one definitely has a cooler shade, which is a win for me, but the um, pencil is definitely quite hard and I found myself having to scratch a little bit uh, at my skin to, to get the pigment to pay off. So guys, I'm still on the hunt. I'm looking for an ultra fine, very grayish brown pencil, eyebrow pencil. Please let me know your recommendations in the comment section down below. I also have two brow gels. I've got the Nude Sticks Brow Boost and Set Gel XL. This I really enjoyed. It has a slight tint, um, but, but not, not anything like too considerable, and it has a small wand. Um, I found that it had good hold, but I won't be repurchasing the Nude Sticks because I prefer this guy, the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I prefer it because I like the applicator better. It's just got a larger, longer fan that I find helps to really get those eyebrows combed and, and brushed up. I find that the Benefit has wonderful longevity. It doesn't get crispy or do any weird textural things. Yeah, I have repurchased that many times. Next category is skincare. Ah, oh, I love talking about skincare. One of my favorite topics is cleansers. She loves a double cleanse. So let's start with obvious Bioderma, Sensibio H2O. I love this for a quick cleanse or for eye makeup, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff. Have been repurchasing for decades and will continue to repurchase. I have the Thankled Mile Cleansing Oil. This is quite inexpensive. You can get it from like YesStyle and Salvana. And uh, it's a Korean, sorry, a Japanese cleansing oil. And one of my favorites. 
it has a wonderful gel, almost gel-like texture, and it's the perfect viscosity for a really great massage. It removes all makeup, and I love that it really rinses very clean. I don't, you don't really need to go in with a second cleanse, although I would recommend it. So yeah, I love this. I wish I could get it in like a big industrial size because I go through this so fast. Another balm oil cleanser, this is the Urban Jungle Melt Me Softly Cleansing Balm. I featured this in my recent evening skincare routine. I'll link that on the screen. Yeah, I have no critiques. This does everything that I want it to, removes my makeup, rinses clean, doesn't have any fragrance, it's vegan. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I've got a little Dermalogica pre-cleanse. I traveled um, with this guy and oh, one of my favorite um, oil cleansing formulas as well, Dermalogica pre-cleanse, will repurchase. In a similar vein, the Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant, it's a powder, you mix with a little bit of water, make a paste and, and lather over the skin. Just gives you that real polished effect that kind of high shine over the surface layer of the skin that I find is a really great base for makeup. Gives you that luminous lift um, before you go to apply your makeup. Yes, we'll repurchase that. Apparently actually this little one, the lady at Dermalogica told me that the top actually comes off. So I will keep that guy for my travel kit. More cleansers. I'm clearly very passionate about cleansing. This is the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. This has a really lovely cushiony gel texture. It's got a very mild lather that gives you that kind of cleansing feeling without stripping the skin. It's very gentle and it has like a rose cucumber scent that is truly just a real pleasure. This is a really pleasurable product to use and it's also a great gentle cleanser. I always have a bottle of this kicking around in my collection. And the last cleanser is the Esme Skin Minerals Probiotic Skin Milk Cleanser. I wasn't very familiar with this brand. It's Australian made. I wasn't very familiar with this brand when I started using this product. But by the end, I had really fallen in love with this cleanser. It had a typical cream consistency but I love to use this on the days where my skin was feeling a little bit kind of red or irritated or raw. I found it to be so soothing and calming. Um, so yes, I will be repurchasing that one. I have two active types of products. Um, the first is the number seven Radiance Plus 15% Vitamin C Serum. This is a fabulous, affordable, drugstore vitamin C serum. It has a, um, I think it's a vitamin C derivative, um, a new vitamin C derivative, and it absolutely made my skin feel brighter, more even tone. I very much enjoyed this. The texture um, layered very beautifully underneath my sunscreen. I have nothing bad to say. I would, I would repurchase this one and a great drugstore recommendation. Another fabulous drugstore recommendation from um, number seven. Man, they're killing it. This is the Advanced Retinol 1.5% Complex. This it has a light lotion texture, quite an active retinol here. I noticed that if I was a little bit too heavy handed, my skin would resurface quite quickly and I'd get quite flaky. Um, so I think that this would be a good one to try if you're, if you're wanting to get into retinol, but you don't want to go to a prescription strength retinol. This is one that you can get from the drugstore and I loved it, I would repurchase. I should say I've been trying many retinols and very many vitamin Cs. And in the previous empties video, someone left a comment and said, how is it only possible that you only finish say like two sunscreens? I don't finish every product that I start. I am tasting a lot of products and products that don't float my boat will go to a very eager and enthusiastic friend or family member. If I finish something, it really says something about the products and I very much enjoyed those. On to what I like to call the splashy splashy. So after I cleanse, I like to use a really light hydrating fluid serum before I go in with my moisturizer. I feel like this combo really helps to increase the hydration in my skin and really make the surface of my skin very plump. So splashy splashy, very important part of the skincare routine in my opinion. The Beauty of Joseon Glow Deep Serum. I love the sunscreen from this brand and I really enjoyed this uh, serum. I think it's designed for uh, pigmentation and brightening purposes. I enjoyed it as much as I did all my other splashy products. 
I don't know if I really noticed that much um, brightening or, or pigmentation uh, removal on top of that. So I'm not sure I would be rushing out to purchase, um, repurchase that one. I've got the Medicate Hydrate B5. This is a hyaluronic serum. For me personally, I don't notice huge differences between expensive hyaluronics and inexpensive hyaluronics. So I tend to go um, more of a drugstore route for that one. For that purpose, I wouldn't be repurchasing this one even though I really enjoyed it. I have the Snow Fox Skin Care Cucumber Recovery Serum. This was lovely, a lovely splashy splashy um, that I used. It's oil free, it's got hyaluronic acid and some peptides in there as well. Very hydrating. Perhaps the splash splashy that started it all, the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Oil Infused Serum. This was a biphase serum that had an oil and a water counterpart. You give it a shake and then pat all over the face and this was when I really became a convert to the splashy splashy lifestyle and it has now increased to a collection so thank you Fresh for that. I will definitely be repurchasing. I have a Dermalogica Circular Hydration Serum. It helps to prevent evaporation of the moisture from the skin. I liked it but I'm not sure that it was so much of a standout that I'm rushing to repurchase right now. And finally, I've got the Q&A Hyaluronic Acid Facial Serum. This is another inexpensive hyaluronic that you can find, uh, I think, at Priceline, and it does a really great job. Okay, the next chronological step after the splashy is either um, sunscreen or moisturizer. So let me talk about sunscreen. This is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics. I have finished three of these. I purchased them in bulk on YesStyle. How to articulate my love for this sunscreen? This is the first sunscreen that made me excited about sun protection. Usually I'm kind of not super thrilled about the texture of my sunscreen or what it's doing to my makeup, but this truly makes my makeup look beautiful and luminous. It's got quite a uh, quite an emollient, creamy finish, so I'm not sure it would be my first recommendation for someone who has more of an oily skin type, but if you're on the drier side, I think this is beautiful. If you've ever tried to apply sunscreen, the correct amount of sunscreen, a quarter of a teaspoon to the face and neck, you'll know that that's a lot of sunscreen. You just sort of find yourself pushing product around for a good few minutes. This sunscreen sinks in. So I feel like I can apply the right amount for proper protection without it feeling like a load of product. Yeah, can't say enough good things about this and it's pretty affordable. Win-win. On to moisturizers. So these are typically more thick and emollient products that I would apply at nighttime maybe when my skin is feeling really quite dry and dehydrated. Something like the Dermalogica Skin Hydrating Mask. This one I cut open to get the very last bits. You guys, this is an old, old holy grail for me. I've been raving about this on my channel for years and years and they've just discontinued it. It is truly upsetting, um, but I'm sure Dermalogic has, has lots in store for us. Right now, uh, the product that has replaced the Skin Hydrating Mask is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. The Sunday Riley CEO Vitamin C Rich Hydration Cream. This was Oh, I really miss this product. It was perhaps one of my favorite rich creams that I've had in rotation for a while. It had a beautiful, really cushiony, lush texture. It's definitely quite sheeny and shiny. I would be recommending this again for more of a dry skin type, but I did notice that when I was using the Sunday Riley vitamin C products in conjunction with each other, my skin looked so bright. It definitely works. There's definitely something going on there. And another one from Sunday Riley, this is the Ceramide Moisturizing Cream. This to me is veering on what I would call like a balm. It almost has a balmy consistency. So this one I would recommend for those of you who are legitimately dry, those who are very chronically dry. I would apply just a few dots at the very end of my evening skincare routine to seal everything in. And I really enjoyed that. It took me like a full year to get through the hub again. So would I repurchase? Sunday Riley, really expensive, but this one I think, I think it deserves a place in my arsenal. I probably would repurchase. Let's talk about oils. 
This is perhaps too much information, but one of my favorite pastimes is to sit in front of my vanity, butt naked, and just apply oil all down my face and down my neck and onto my chest and onto my upper body. This is the ritual. I love it. I recommend it and you should try it. So here are some of the oils that I would use for said purpose. I have the Asano Hydrating Rose Hip. I love a rose hip. I love a good old rose hip from the drugstore. This was a great one. It has a lot of healing properties. I would repurchase um, that one. I have two oils from Le Mav, the vitamin C brightening oil and the vitamin A repair oil. I believe that my favorite out of the two was the vitamin A repair oil. It had a really thick, very dense oil texture, but I did enjoy both. I'm not sure if I would be rushing out to repurchase maybe any of these oils because I enjoy the variety. I enjoy trying something new. The Conserving Beauty Conserve Your Face Oil. This one wasn't my favorite texture. It was um, perhaps like a little bit too thick. And then I have the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Superfusion Facial Oil. This, I checked the ingredient list. It has primarily avocado oil, um, but it also has some evening primrose and some other um, variety of oils. It does have essential oils in it. If you are sensitive to your lavenders and whatnot, you can safely skip this one, but I really did enjoy it. Such a luscious treat and my skin did respond really well to that one. Um, would I repurchase again? Not right now, maybe one day. Okay, let's move on to hair. The Orbe Gold Lust Repair and Restore Shampoo and Conditioner. This is a product that I purchased a few times over the years and it was always like my special treat. It's really intensely, exorbitantly expensive, but I would buy it whenever I wanted to treat myself. And this time round, it just doesn't have the chokehold on me that it once did. I think the Orbe Gold Lust isn't doing the amazing things to my hair that it once did. To be fair, my hair is now very, uh, very dry and damaged and definitely in need of a cut. Maybe it's time to move on to the Olaplex. I also have uh, a product here from Pump Hair Care. This is the hair growth shampoo. The conditioner, I'm still working on. Let me know in the comment section down below, do you finish your shampoo first or your conditioner first? For me, I always finish the shampoo. Uh, this is a shampoo geared towards hair growth. And over the past few years, my hair has had a journey. I've lost hair, I've gained hair. I've lost hair, I've gained hair. And this is just my attempt to try to keep on top of it. I definitely have a, like an area here where my hair is really thin. Um, so I'm trying to work on that. I've got the Christoph Robin Back to Your Baby Blonde. If you have blonde hair, you should definitely try this mask. It, ha it gives the blonde tone such a wonderful creamy element. It's like very creamy blonde uh, toning mask and it also deeply nourishes uh, the hair. So your hair is silky and also it uh, takes away some of those brassy tones. Blondes, get on it. I have two dry shampoos. The Batiste Dry Shampoo and Defrizz. So this is Batiste's new offering that is designed to defreeze the hair in addition to dry shampooing. Didn't no notice much on the defreezing side, but I did really enjoy this. A lightweight dry shampoo, massage it into the hair, really refreshes the hair. I would repurchase. Love a bit of Batiste. And then I also have the IGK Direct Flight Matcha Dry Shampoo. Ah, oh, anything matcha, I must have it. I had this in my travel kit while I traveled Europe and I really enjoyed it. It was a very lightweight dry shampoo, not too gritty. Not sure if I would run out and repurchase it because the cheap stuff is good. I like it. Next, let us move on to body and fragrance. Uh, so I have here the Byredo Tulip Mania. Every now and again, again, when I'm feeling really like I want to treat myself, I'll buy myself a lovely hand wash. It's just one of those everyday pleasures that just over time increases the amount of joy in my life. I love a lovely hand soap. And so I was looking at the Byredo counter and I thought I would pick up Tulip Mania, which is um, the fragrance, the same fragrance as Byredo La Tulip. La Tulip is, I think, one of the most underrated, I actually have this in my collection, one of the most underrated Byredo fragrances. It is, exactly as I would imagine a tulip. It's like really bright and green and fresh. Pause. 
it's quite a linear fragrance, like it's just one note, the tulip, but it's so beautiful in its simplicity, a really elegant fragrance. So I got it in the hand soap and truly it was a joy every day. I loved it. I don't know if I'll, I'll repurchase this one again because I like variety. I like to try something new. But yeah, rest assured, I loved it. And then I have Jo Malone Vetifer and Golden Vanilla, another mini that I carried around in my handbag again through Europe and I finished. I loved this one so much that I immediately went and repurchased a bottle um, at Jo Malone. It's a wonderful one for men and women. It's got that great unisex vibe. It feels warm and chic and I absolutely love it. So I've already repurchased that one. One more, I've got the Nooks Multi-Purpose Dry Oil. I came across a TikTok that said, what are all the girls in um, Paris wearing? Why do they smell so good? Apparently it's the Nooks Dry Oil. And I believe it because this smells intoxicating. It has the most wonderful, warm, yummy smell. And I went through that at record speed. I applied it to my hair. I applied it to my hands, to my body. I applied it as a fragrance and I want to repurchase. I will repurchase. Thank you so much for coming over. Let me know in the comment section down below what video would you like to see next? And if you would like to see a little bit more of this face, then you can come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy. I will see you next time. Bye.